In this problem, we are asked to solve for the total impedance. This problem is a series parallel circuit with three components. We have a heater and two identical motors. Were this a DC problem with only resistances, you would know what to do with this. You would calculate the total resistance as 1 over the sum of the reciprocal of the resistances. But this is not a DC circuit. This is an AC circuit. So instead of resistance, we have impedance. And you'll see I have a line over the top because impedance is a vector. So the total impedance is equal to 1 over the reciprocal of the impedances. Where Z1 is the resistor all by itself, Z2 is the series combination of the 10 ohm resistor and the J5 ohm inductor, and Z3 is the other motor. So now we can place these in our circuit so it becomes 1 over 1 over 12 plus 1 over 10 plus J5 plus 1 over 10 plus J5. If you have the right calculator, this might be all you need to do. There are several calculators out there that allow you to do complex numbers directly, and you can calculate the reciprocal of impedance very quickly using the 1 over X key. But wait a minute. We have a word for 1 over impedance, and that is the admittance of a circuit, where the admittance of the circuit is equal to 1 over the impedance of the circuit. So you see, 1 over 12 is an admittance. 1 over 10 plus J5 is an admittance. And don't forget the rules. If you're dealing with a series circuit, you can add the impedances, just like we did with that motor. The 10 plus J5 is a series circuit. In a parallel circuit, we can add admittances. So this particular circuit, the total admittance is equal to the sum of the individual admittances, where Y1 is equal to 1 over 12, Y2 is equal to 1 over 10 plus J5, and admittance Y3 is equal to 1 over 10 plus J5. When we have the total admittance, we can calculate the total impedance by taking the reciprocal. At this point, we're going to launch Scilab to perform the calculations for us. In this first step, I'm loading the scilab.sc script that I've constructed. This script has some functions that make the phaser calculations easier to perform. See the comment section below for a link to this Scilab code. Once we have that, we can then enter our individual impedances. So Z1 is 12 ohms. Impedance 2 is 10 plus J times 5. And Z3 is just equal to Z2. Next, we calculate the admittances. So admittance 1 is equal to 1 over Z1. Admittance 2 is equal to 1 over Z2. And admittance 3 is equal to 1 over Z3. The total admittance is equal to the sum of admittance 1 plus admittance 2 plus admittance 3. And now we can calculate the total impedance as 1 over the total admittance. In rectangular form, that gives us 3.7 plus J 1.2 ohms. You could calculate the absolute value of this. That gives you about 3.9 ohms. And then if we wanted to calculate the angle, we'll have to go through a little bit more work. When you have a complex number, Scilab allows you to pull out the real and imaginary parts. If you use the real function and then enter Z total as a parameter, that will tell you the real component. You can also do that with the imaginary. So IMAG, then the parameter Z total tells you the imaginary part. Now we can assign these to some variables. I'll use R for real and I for imaginary. And then you can take the arctangent of the imaginary over the real, and that should give you the angle and radians. Whoops, that's not it. We've done something wrong here. Um, oh, there it is. So I need to back up and I need to change the I. So I is equal to not the real part, but the imaginary part. There we go. Now we hit the up arrow a few more times. So arctangent is the imaginary part over the real part. So that's 0.32 radians. And now we'll do a radians to degrees conversion. And the angle is 18.2 degrees. So again, let's look up the absolute value of the Z total. And that gives us 3.9 at an angle of 18.2 ohms. That's a lot of work, so I've made a function that makes this easier for us to do. We can just type display polar, 
and then enter z total as a parameter and it tells you 3.9 at an angle of 18.2 ohms. Look to the comments below to find the link to the Scilab code and please leave a comment if you have any particular electromechanical problems you would like to see solved.